Hello everyone, in this video we're going to continue studying trigonometric functions. So far, we've seen sine, cosine, and tangent worked forwards, and now we're going to work with their inverse function. What? It, wait, is it really all that scary? Well then let's... <laughs> we had better get started. The focus of this video is to be able to go backwards in a trig problem. Instead of using the angle to solve for the side length, we're going to use the side length to solve for the angle. And it may or may not require us to use a new button on the calculator. You might recognize this calculator. In order to get to inverse trig functions on this calculator, you'll have to press the inverse button in order to get to sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse, here referred to as arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. So defining the inverses in trig, it means we're going to have to do the inverse ratio. So instead of doing like square or square rooting, we'll have to do sine and sine inverse. Much like you'd have to square root x squared in order to find out that the answer to this problem is positive or negative three, we would have to do the inverse of sine in order to find out what the x value is that makes it equal to three fifths. That inverse is going to affect both sides of the equation. And the three inverses we'll look at today are sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. Here we're confronted with the problem to solve for a missing angle, rounding to the nearest hundredth. In order to do this problem, I will start with writing out the trig function we would normally work with. If I'm solving for angle A, I need to know the opposite over the adjacent, which means I'm doing tangent. My tangent of angle A is 85 over 150. However, to get the a value out of this, I need to do tangent inverse of both sides of the equation. Just like square rooting a squared value, our inverse of tangent will tell us what the angle A is, and our tangent inverse of 85 over 150 is something that we'll keep for an answer. When I put tangent inverse of 85 out of 150 into my calculator, I get 29.538, which I'm going to round to 29.54 which makes our final answer. Note that this works because my calculator is set to degrees. Here, we're given a sine ratio, which we must solve for the missing angle. Again, I'll need sine inverse of the ratio 9.1 over 17.5 because when we look at the original equation, I must apply sine inverse to both sides of the equation. When I plug this one into my calculator, I get 31.33, which represents our final answer. For our final example here, we're solving for the measure of angle G to the nearest degree. In order to do this, we're going to need a coordinate grid so we can plot out the points and connect them to form the triangle. Next, I have to choose one of the trigonometric functions to use here. I'm going to choose GH and GJ because then I can use the adjacent and hypotenuse to solve with cosine. What I mean here is that I have to solve for each side length. I'm going to have to do the distance formula on each one. And now that I've set up the distance formula, I'm just going to need to solve and use these numbers to set up my equation. Again, I have cosine of g because I'm using the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which I must use cosine inverse in order to solve. When I plug that entire expression into the calculator, I get 63.4 degrees, which I will round to the nearest degree for 63 degrees. Notice that this problem required two distance formula calculations and then an inverse. To sum up this video, you'll use trig inverses to figure out an angle measure if you have side lengths. You'll start by setting up the equation of the sine, cosine, or tangent. You'll use the inverse of that trig function in order to solve. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!